Hello everyone, I am Freddy here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Go Figure Pulse Rifle, a new forsaken weapon that can be collected through any normal gameplay. The Go Figure is a legendary 450 connected pulse rifle that can be gotten from any in-game war activities such as raids, crucible, gambit, strikes, etc. via a legendary engram or a reward. It's a bulky and heavy looking weapon with a vicious sound upon when fired, and is capable of taking on the lightest to problematic enemies in all activities with ease thanks to its aggressive burst for me. Thanks to this, it makes the weapon easy to pick up and use straight out of the package with whatever perks given, although there are a few disadvantages that weaken the weapon in certain circumstances, which I will cover later on. But firstly, let's focus on the base stats of the weapon. It has an impact of 35, range of 72, stability of 61, handling of 32, reload speed of 40, aim assist 40, recoil direction of 69, and zoom of 18. These are the base stats of the weapon, without any perks or scopes attached to the weapon, so it's just this raw form, but as you can see, its stats across the board is very solid for an aggressive frame pulse rifle. Although, recoil direction, handling and reload speed can be tweaked to be stronger. Now in my version, you can see that I managed to get a roll that fixes a few disadvantages for the weapon, but also giving me a good flexible roll that many would consider is a god roll for its perks alone. In the scope slot, I have Dust Scope T2, which greatly increases range but slightly decreases handling speed. In the second scope slot, I have a Wolf Sight W1, which offers an increased handling speed and a slight increase in range. In the second perk slot, we have a Impended Mag, which increases my magazine size, and Flare Mag Wall, which slightly increases stability but greatly increases reload speed. In the first slot, I have Zen Moment, which increases my weapon stability every time I cause damage with it. And lastly, we have Rampage, which increases the weapon's damage after each kill up to 3 times, and is a great staple perk to have for any weapon, and it also pushes our weapon from being a 2 burst to a 1 burst against lower level red bar enemies via headshot or body shot. My version also comes with a range masterwork, which is great to have if the weapon had low range, but in our case, the weapon already has a good amount of range to it, so its masterwork ability is kind of gone to waste. A better masterwork for the weapon would be a stability masterwork to help control the weapon's recoil even more, or a handling masterwork to increase our ADS time for snappier shots. Now like I mentioned before, the weapon uses an aggressive frame, which is a deadly 4 burst and centric perk capable of downing low level red bar enemies or players in the crucible via headshot through 2 initial bursts, while also increasing the staggering effect upon each round that hits targets, making them a bit more vulnerable in the majority of fights. This Ascindra perk can clear up small ads relatively easily at medium to long ranges, making this weapon have a very moderate TDK thanks to it. Which, if you're looking for a weapon to take out other players in the Crucible with ease of use, then this weapon thankfully can reach that goal for you. Now, two issues with the weapon I've noticed is that the recoil pattern does tend to drift upwards left if you try to fire a weapon in quick recession, which is controllable and manageable at times yet can easily make you miss your critical shots in heat to firefight if you panic and not focus. Secondly, it fires quite slow, which because of its incendiary perk in PvE, it's not that much of a big thing to worry about, but when taking on players in a crucible, you'll be easily beaten up by other players that are using faster firing weapons like the faster fire hand cannons or faster firing pulse rifles, or even ARs at some ranges. So really, if you're going to use this weapon, you have to make sure you Pick your fights carefully and engage only when you know best, because 9 times out of 10, if you rush and you think this weapon is going to kill all opponents the moment you face them, you've got nothing coming. Now, to fix the first issue, having a counterbalance mod which gives you a 15 plus instability can help straighten out the recoil pattern from drifting to the left, to now also drifting it upwards, which is more suitable for a pulse rifle in terms of killing targets. This will also jump your stability from 61 to 76, which makes shots more accurate after each burst than it was before, so landing consistent headshots on targets become even more easier when mobile or standing in one spot. Other mods to also look out for are targeting adjuster, which increases your aim assist and make your aim on target a lot stickier than it already is, which might or might not be ideal for some situation, as having too strong of an aim assist can make it harder to switch between targets and a bit more harder to control in PvP. Alternatively, Radar Tuner, which I would say is a second rate mod to go with for PvP modification, as it will allow you to have an edge in knowing where to strike first by fully maximising your minimap, but only ideal in PvP. PvE is not really that recommended. PvE now, you have the minor, major, and boss specs, 
which are okay at best for the weapon as they give you a bit of extra damage against certain enemy types. But for a weapon such as this with a slower than normal fire rate with slow but high damage, it's best to focus on ones that actually improve weapon further in this current base stats like I mentioned before. And that's you use minor and major and boss mods for your secondary or heavy slots, which will house some of your harder hitting weapons. But this is up to you to experiment with and it's up to you to decide on whether you want to use PvE focused mods for the weapon or if you want to go more PvP focused mods for the weapon. Now like I mentioned before, it has a relatively good TDK, requiring only two full bursts to the head in PvP to down a non super player. But landing a full two bursts in Crucible isn't so easy as I make it sound there to be. In most cases you're going to be landing one full or partial burst to the head. Then follow the rest up via body shot to down players, which depending on how accurate you are, you will be around 85% of the time doing so. You also have to remember that the current meta is based around high TTK weapons that can kill within 3 to 5 shots. So Lunar Howls, Bygones, Shattering Bone, Ace of Spades, Shafron, Mind Bender's Ambition, etc. All these type of weapons can easily outshoot you if you don't land the first shot. Or if you don't watch your engagements, so you really have to be careful with which type of weapons you go up against in today's climate. Plus, even if you do land the first shot, you're not guaranteed to actually get the kill, because like I said, some of these weapons, for example like Lunar Howl, they hit hard, can kill within 2-3 to three shots, but they fire a lot faster than my current go figure has, and unless I can catch them off guard, or unless I can get the first few bursts in and finish them off by body shots, 9 out of 10 you will lose the engagement if you don't plan out ahead. Yet, considering how stable the weapon already is, with some of those perks, you're going to be landing the majority of your body shots plus headshots to down players quite easily in the crucible, which works in your favour in medium to long ranges where body shots will vastly make up the majority of your kills engagements. So although you're on a disadvantage in a way against other players, you still have an advantage with your high burst damage, which like I said, can kill crucible players within 2 full bursts. So either land a full burst to the head and then finish them the rest by the body, or land 2 full bursts to the head and well, there you go, you just kill the player. Now in medium ranges it does 27 critical damage and 16 to the body in PvP, which is the average amount of damage for an aggressive frame, 450 weapon pulse rifle. Now with Vampage this can buff out critical damage from 27 to 29 at Vampage number 2 and 16 to 18 via body shot, which is generally enough to down players in less than a few seconds, and is very noticeable when taken on one player and then focus on the next, as the time to kill the next player is slightly reduced to only needing to land one full burst to the head and then finish the playoff via a body shot afterwards, if the puck activation is still going, so it's very forgiving for the users on your end. So of course, the role I managed to get gives me two perks that work in tandem to each other, which are Zen Moment and Vampage, both considered A tier perks and works perfectly for weapons such as this, which needs a good stability for straighter shots and even more damaging buffs to push your TDK in the Crucible or PvE to be even faster. I would even say that this is an ideal role you want to at least try and aim for in PvP or even in PvE, no matter what way you look at it, the weapon is good for both contents but ideal for certain situations and certain uh, monsters or certain bosses or certain players and such, it's, I say it's a very good all rounder weapon that you'll see a lot of players actually use, even for the raid. Along with that, I also use my weapons with reloading to be a bit more faster than normal, which is always a pro in any type of content, and the scope of choice allows me to increase my handling speed by quite a large margin and is definitely needed if you use it primarily in PvP, because like I said before, if you want to take on players with the fast fire weapons, you need to land the first hit. And even though that might not happen, it's a 50 50 chance. It's best to take your chances. This is what you want to be aiming for, for the weapon, of course. You want to focus on improving the weapon's pros for the weapons to make it even better than it currently is, which in my case, I'm halfway there for some of the perks. Where the mass work is the only thing that I failed to make the weapon a, I'd say, a god tier rarity, as its range is pretty useless in our case. But that doesn't make the weapon terrible in any sort of way, it's still viable, it's still good, it's just I wish I had the option to actually change the mass work. So overall, this is a very well crafted pulse rifle that is easy to pick up and serves you straight out of the package with not a lot of or aggressive frames going off at times. Now I scored this weapon a 5 out of 5 for its stats being given to new and old players, 
with further enhancement from RG roles allowing you to build around it to focus on its great stability and range or more focus on its damage which is always a deal breaker if you're a PvP fanatic. Now if you're someone who wants a weapon similar to the Regix Broadsword in terms of ergonomic feel and stats but don't want to grind out competitive which I don't blame you then the Mighty Go figure is the choice to go for. It's a weapon that will serve you well for all content no matter what level you are and I honestly recommend you use this weapon in PvP, PvE, raids, strikes, nightfall, anything. It's good. And honestly guys, it's a weapon you don't want to miss out on. So, that comes to the end of the weapons review video. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the content, then do leave a like, a sub, and also do press the bell button to see all the updated to when I upload. As I would appreciate it a lot if you do. But like always, thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon.